Hey folks, it's Ruth Guy here, how you doing? Welcome back to Estancia La Pacho. And today we're going to carry on and just finish off these trees. I've done a few more and we'll get these all done. We've got to go and get a load of fertilizer for our sprayer. We're going to get some liquid fertilizer up for that one rather than the granules. And we'll deal with seed and stuff like that for the seed tender and the seed drills and everything another time. We're not actually going to do that today. So just bring this one up here. Now I've also got, as I said I would, the Brux Chipper, the updated version. Now there has been a couple of versions to update and I think I've got the most up-to-date one now. I did have a little bit of a look around and this one, there was some slight issues with it not working properly but this seems to have had everything ironed out. So I have got the Brux Chipper Big Daddy and we're going to go and get that one and take a look at it just going to do a few of the pine, uh, pine trees, palm trees. They're palm trees, Frit. Get with the program. Palm trees right here. We'll do a few of these using the Brux Chipper just to finish these off. So I'm going to go and get this selection of trees over here. We've got three or four of them left over here, mostly small ones. And then we'll get the chipper and we'll use that one just to finish off those last few. Um, we can also see the, the full chipper in action. I did mean to get rid of course play off of here for a while, but I completely forgot to do it. Um... The updated version of the Brux Shipper is absolutely brilliant. I'm really, really pleased with that one. I've used it for Wednesday's time lapse. I know a few people are getting a bit fed up. Well, several people are getting fed up with me using, uh, doing so much forestry work on the time lapse series at the moment, as um, I've been doing that quite. I've done almost exclusively that for a couple of episodes. One more on Wednesday, and then I will have accomplished everything that I want to get done on the map with most of the forestry stuff for quite some time to come and it means i'm then free to move on to other things so yeah i do apologize for those of you who are getting a bit fed up with it uh but there is method to my madness i wanted to get it all out of the way so i don't have to come back to it later on because i'm not that big a fan of doing forestry either and i kind of wanted to get it all out of the way um, but anyway, I digress. That is not this series. That is a different series. My question for this week, we have got some little piggies up here. We've got, uh, you know, I don't actually remember. I think we've got 200 pigs. Uh, 250 pigs we've got up there. But we're not actually going to do anything with them yet. We haven't put any water, we haven't put any food, anything like that in for them. And we're just sort of holding them there until we want to get them ready and activate them on this map. Now, at the moment, we're not going to do that, but we might do it soon. So my question is, do you want me to activate the pigs yet? Or do you want me to hold off for several more weeks and do some stuff down here? Because we haven't really done anything to the cows yet either. And the idea was to do some stuff with the cows first and then move on to the pigs. So I realized what I'm asking here because the cows had so much food that we haven't really needed to worry about them. They're now starting to to get to the point where we're going to have to you know think about doing something with the cows but um you know we still haven't had to do a great deal with them so do you want me to activate the pigs yet or would you rather i left it several weeks uh concentrate on the cows first do a harvest that sort of thing and then come back to the pigs later on it's your vote it's your game head into the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner and if we can just grab this little tree here there we go one little one there, and these little ones are actually quite difficult to grab hold of with the scorpion, but you can do it. It is possible. I think what we'll do is we'll grab this tree here. Help A has stop work unexpectedly. A does that. It's not really unexpected anymore. When it happens that frequently, it's not really unexpected. It's, it's more sort of par for the course. This is what we expect, just to give up. Not try anything new. Not, you know, just, just run across the field and grab that lorry on your own and you, know, you do, do the job that you paid for, But I, I might add. Um, why won't this cut? Sometimes you've got to cut the stump fairly high on these trees. Uh, but then that's the same with any trees. You, we get the same with the pine trees on any of the other maps. So um, there's nothing unusual with that. We'll leave that little small one. I'm going to come back to that one with the, the Brux Chipper. So let's... Oh, no, I didn't actually mean to do that. Uh... I wanted to do that to switch the machine off. There we go, like that. And then I'll bring this one round. And we'll stop him right there. I'm actually thinking that we should get rid of this one. I think I'm done with the tree harvester. Am I done? Yes. I'm as done as I'll ever be. So we'll get rid of this one because otherwise we're going to end up spending a load more money than we need to. And I really don't want to spend any money unless I absolutely have to. I need to go into least machinery we want that one there and i'm going to return you yes right you're done finished with 
Finito, Alfie de Zane, au revoir, fare thee well. Right, uh, we'll take this tractor, I think, and we'll go and get the new Brux Chipper. So we'll return this old one. We've tested this one out. We've tried it. We've had a play around with it. It was very cool, but we don't need it anymore. Actually, I'm going to move this one. I'm going to drop the trailer down over here a little bit further away so that we don't accidentally have the Brux Chipper unloading into the trailer because I don't actually want it to do that at the moment. So I'll just unhitch that one there. And this can start heading towards the shop. If I fold it up like that, before I do rush that one off the shop, let's just quickly zip over to here and start this one up. Now, we have actually almost very nearly finished this field. If you take a look around, we've got... Actually, it's completely finished all the way down here. And... It's completely finished all the way down here. I think we've literally just got to do a little tiny pass around the outside and this is finally done we have done all of our harvest we're not going to need any more than just one load of seed in there which is perfect because we do need this truck for a few things so if i take this one and start folding it down like that and start putting the spout back over we can run this one back over we'll come back and we'll deal with the seed in just a minute we've got trailers well we're not going to put those trailers on yet for the wood chips we're going to take the flatbed trailer first we can take that one to the shop we're going to get the fertilizer we're going to bring the fertilizer back here and then once we've got the fertilizer back here we can get that unloaded that is then ready for the um sprayer sprayer can start using that to finish spraying the fields that we've got to get done here uh, i want that little trailer over there we can also drive on our concrete the concrete is nice and hard now so we can drive around on this look at this look at this all our hard work has paid off this is awesome <laughs> right let's just bring this one up in here and you've got to bring this one fairly close to it like that and then we press r and it jumps over and it kind of excuse it on sideways but it worked the important thing is it worked and nobody was injured that's that's the two main things that we need to be looking at here is nobody nobody got hurt and it did actually work so we'll ignore the bit where it sort of slid sideways and um twisted around and all sorts and this lorry truck whichever you want to call it doesn't actually have a rear hitch which is a little bit of a shame i don't think it's actually an option for it either and this that is a bit of a nuisance i don't think that i can pull the dolly with this truck so what i'm gonna need to do is get a tractor over here in just a second i think let's just back it up it might be able to do it i'm hoping it will but i very much doubt it i've got a feeling that it won't do this uh oh it will i can actually pull the entire thing with my pickup truck very realistic i mean yeah it um, actually that is fairly realistic because of the way that the the back wheels are slipping and moving and so on so yeah it's kind of realistic actually so let's just unhitch that one and then i can move the dolly out of the way bit of a struggle for this truck admittedly but it will do it you know you, you certainly wouldn't want to take this out onto the road and you wouldn't be able to move it anywhere if it was fully laden but this i think it could actually do that i do believe because you do get the the gooseneck trailers that go onto these pickups and they can that you can sort of put quite a bit of weight on them so I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy that that's reasonably representative of real life. Now there's... Oh, that's one of the... Is that one of the trees? There's a few trees on the map that are like much bigger than normal. And I got a feeling that that is one of them right there. Right there in front of us. This one. This one right here. Got a feeling that these two might be... Uh, you know, I don't actually know. Let's, have, let's take a look. Yes... Apparently there are a couple that you can't actually cut. There's no way to cut. I'm not going to try and cut them because I don't want to risk cutting those down. But there are a few up on the plateau up on the top. So we're going to have a go up there. Somebody has alerted me to this. And so I'm going to take it as a personal challenge to find a way to get rid of those trees. Um, although that might not actually happen if they're just a map object. Then in which case, yeah, it, it, nothing's going to happen. It's, it's just literally going to be me go up there and mess around for a little bit and then say you know what i don't think we can do this and then i'll come back again dejected with my tail hanging between my legs i'm gonna get this one over to the shop then i'm gonna go up and i'm gonna get the john deere with the brux chipper and i'm gonna get that one over to the shop as well then we're going to do a little bit of purchasing and then we're gonna get everything back to the farm i'm going to cut straight in across here i'm not actually gonna go out around the road 
I don't know what they'll have to say about it. There's no sign saying keep off the grass, so I think we're probably going to be okay. But, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. See if anybody comes out and complains to us bitterly. I have been told that there are several... Because it wasn't... A, I did say last week that it was the other John Deere that I had trouble with, with um, this Brux chipper that I couldn't get the thing to hitch onto. Uh, it wasn't the other John Deere, it was one of the Masseys, and it didn't, it wouldn't tilt forward. And somebody else has said to me that there is actually quite a few tractors that it won't work with. Um, it, you know, the, the machine does work, it just won't tip forward, and there are quite a number of tractors that won't actually let it tip forward. Nobody knows why, it's just a slight bug with the Brux. I don't know if it's this particular one that I'm using, the Brux Un, but this is not the one that we want. The one that we want is this bad boy in here. It's called the Big Daddy. Uh, let's go into there and we can scroll up through. There we go. The Brux right there. Big Daddies. So we get that one right there and I'm going to go. Now I did originally have that orange didn't I to sort of match. So we'll, we'll go for the same. This is f almost five grand to lease this one. So yes I'm going to lease that one. And then I come out of there, I go back, and I go to here, the Brooks Un Big Daddy St... St... The, the, the Big big Daddy St... I think it's Stump Grinder. I'm pretty sure it's Stump Grinder. Anyway, we're going to lease that one as well. Yes, we're going to lease that. There we go. So we've now got the Brooks Un Big Daddy St... And the Brooks, which is the Big Daddy. That's actually the Stump Grinder. It's got to be two separate bits because something something to do with the way the coding works in the game now. It's got to be separate pieces rather than all the same. Uh, we want now some liquid fertilizer. Now this comes in 2,000 litre tanks rather than 1,000 litre bags. So I don't want to overdo it because we don't have vast quantities of money. So we'll get, uh, well, we, if we get five, that's 10,000 litres of, let's get six. Six fits on there quite nicely, doesn't it? Uh, I lost count. I actually lost count in just like three. Uh, no, I got five. I almost, I almost got it. I almost got it. Let's just get one more of these, and then we can get these loaded up onto the trailer. And bye. Yes. Okay. Fairly well. Goodbye. And I want to look in. I want to say skid steer loaders. Nope, it's not in skid steer loaders. Is it in wheel loaders? It's not in there either. Maybe it is in the forestry equipment. Maybe I just ah, there it is. That bad boy right there. That is the one that we're going to be wanting. So if I select that one, you can have it for a skid steer loader, a wheel loader, or a skid steer, or a wheel loader. I thought you could put this on a tractor or something. Um, I'm thinking, because we don't have a wheel loader, a skid steer loader would be the better option. Because it's small, it's low down to the ground, and I think it'll work. And I think it'd be better, and it'd be cheaper as well, because we can lease that one, like that. There, see? We can do anything we want. We are all powerful. And, and we want to go for this. So I know that it's more expensive. That's five grand. Well, five one twenty. This is three nine twenty. So we're actually going to spend one thousand two hundred pounds at dollars. That's dollars. See that little symbol up there, Frith? That, that means dollars, not pounds. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little slow today. <laughs> we're going to get the three two five T, the forestry version, and we're going to lease that one right there, like that. There we go. Come back out, and ooh, you know it would help if I press the right buttons. I could actually move. Um, so we got six tanks that we're going to load up onto the trailer. We've got this one right here. Now this one creates fields and grinds stumps at the same time. So obviously we're doing forestry, so we want the forestry JCB with the tracks and everything. It does look very cool. So we'll have play around with that one a little bit later. We're not going to do that one yet. The first thing that we want to do is we want to get... What do we want to do first? You know what we actually want to do first is we want to get this truck right here and we want to load up those pallets and then we want to get those back to the yard and then as soon as we've done that we can then come turn, oh we're already on pallets. Once we've got the pallets back to the yard uh, we can get the sprayer going again and then once we've done that we can come back and we can grab the Brux chipper and get the stump grinder fitted on and then we can go whizzing back up to the palm trees and we can get the rest of those palm trees cut down and then when we've done that we can come back down here and we can get skid steer and we can get stump grinder put onto it and we can take that one up there and we can have play around with that. Simple, if you see it quickly. Uh, right, if I do that and then I unload onto the trailer and I put the straps on that would be much better. I'm going to get these back to the yard a second and then we can get the sprayer loaded up. You know, I'm going to actually have to use a different route when we do silage because we will eventually... Although, we're seriously considering not doing bulk silage in there, aren't we? We're just going to stick with the bales and we're going to do the bulk silage over at the BGA. Uh, 
I still like that idea. I still like the idea of doing the bulk silage at the BGA rather than over here. And the silage that we do this time is going to be whole crop. I know a lot of people have been asking me to do whole crop for quite a while, actually. So, yes, I concur. We will do whole crop, and I think it will be better all round. Now, if I bring this one over here... You know what? I could actually just leave the trailer here. I could leave this stuff on the trailer. We'll take the straps off, just to make it a little bit easier. And then if I unhitch the trailer, I can literally just leave it there. So let me come whizzing in through here a minute. And off we leap. We leap into this one. Start it up. Now, if I grab the rest of that bit that's on the ground first, we can load up that tank. And then we can start using the ones that are on the trailer. Keeping them on the trailer is just going to be easier. And we don't actually need to use that trailer for a little while. I don't have anything else that I want to do with it. We will be moving the bales with it later once we've got the sheds. But at the moment, we don't even have the money for the shed. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to have to do something about that. Uh, I'm thinking maybe sell some product. You know, we've got a few crops that we can sell. So that might be the way forward to actually do some selling. What do we got? Let's see. We've got 45,000 litres of sunflowers. We have 54,000 litres of corn, uh, beans, that's not corn, that's beans. 1,700 there. I'm kind of wanting to wait for a great demand, but at the same time, we have, it, it's very risky waiting, isn't it? We've lost product already. We've lost crops. We lost a load of corn, didn't we? Um, because of our random events, storing crops is actually risky business for us. Um, we're able to feed the pigs directly off the field once we do get started on pigs. But storing anything is risky for us because there's always the chance that we'll end up losing some of it completely or we've got to sell it really cheap or something like that. So it might not be a good idea to wait for great demands. It might be a good idea to sort of say, right, $1,700 is pretty good. So we'll load up some beans and we'll run them down and we'll sell them. I'm actually thinking that this might be the way forward. Um, yeah. Just wondering what trailer to take them in. Because we don't have a big trailer. We've got... Do we? Oh, we no, we got that red trailer. That's like 32,000. So we could we could use the red trailer, and that's going to get us like 50 grand for a load. That's, that's actually pretty good. I mean, it'd be nice if we could get a trailer for the uh, truck, and then we could go trundling up and down the road with that one, and that would be a better way of doing it. We would end up making more money, but, um, yeah, it's, it's whether it would offset the cost of the trailer. And we wouldn't be able to buy one yet, so we'd have to lease it. So obviously you've got more leasing costs coming in. Leasing is building up. We've already got that truck on lease, and that one's quite expensive. The, the lorry, the truck, whichever you want to call it, that one's already leased. So, yeah, it is starting to build up a little bit. We're going to have to be very careful about this. $26,000 left. Now, we don't have a loan, so we can take out a loan. That is always a future option, but I didn't really want to do that yet. I don't really want to risk getting into debt too early on. Finish that one unfolding, and then, ooh, have I, how well have I guessed that? That's not actually too bad, I mean it is stuck out a little bit, but um, overall this is pretty good. That's, that's as low as I can go right there. That's fine. Let's just leave it right there, and away you go. That's pretty close to the edge of the field, I think. I'm pleased with that. I think that was successful. Right, next up I wanted to get, ooh, let's not forget this one. I think we'll do this one first so that we've definitely got this field finished. It'll be, it'll be all done then. It'll be completely finished. So let's just lower that one down there and round that bit. And then we need to... I'm going to worry about the bottom end of the field. We can just dash all the way along the bottom. And get all the way over this, the other corner, I think. I don't think there's going to be any bits along this bottom end that need doing. I think all of this is okay. And then we can run up the other side... Long the top and back down again and we should be all good to go I'm still not seeing anything here that looks like it's not sown there's probably a little bit in is there any on this corner might be a little bit right there right on that very edge but nothing much to speak of and I'll bring that one back up again and we come back up here no we did quite a good job of getting everything coming down through here when we first started it all off we caught absolutely everything all the way through there uh, what about up here? Is there anything on this bit? I'm just going to lower it down just to make sure. I think we did pretty well. There may be a couple of little bits here. This is not the most even edge of the field. and There's definitely a bit right there. 
You know what? I don't think we've actually done anything useful all the way back there, right from that very bottom corner. But this bit here, we've definitely missed a bit, little bit here. I'll tell you what, I should bring it into the actual field a little bit so that I'm not drilling grass all the way up through because that would actually be damaging the cultures a little bit. So if I do it like this, we can at least pretend to be a little bit realistic on this because that is kind of the idea of the series. Is we're supposed to be doing this reasonably realistically, even though I do tend to <laughs> use mostly auto-load machines because, um, yeah, I, I, I don't like doing it really. Uh, <laughs> I don't like doing it realistically. I'm doing a realistic series and I don't like doing it realistically, so I'm not playing it realistically. Does that... Yeah. Let's, not, let's, let's just gloss over that bit, shall we, and move on? I'll just quickly run on around here. This is just going to get dull. So I'll finish this little bit up here, and then we can go back, and it's the Brux Daddy. The Big Daddy. It's Big Daddy. It's not just a daddy. This is a Big Daddy. We're going to go and get that one, and we're going to cut down a few palm trees and take a look at the difference between the two. This one, I love it. I genuinely love this machine. It is probably my favorite machine. All of our planting is done, and the sprayer has also finished doing that little field up in the top. So as soon as we've done this, instead of going straight to the Big Daddy, we're going to move the sprayer, and then we can go to the Big Daddy. Actually, we might get the Big Daddy and take it up there first, so it's all ready to roll, and I'll move the sprayer, and then we can get going with that, because I really, really want to have a look at that, and I want to get those trees finished today. I have to finish those today, because there's another machine that I want to use for tomorrow's episode to start loading up all of the wood chips, and it's going to take a little while to keep that one running. We also... Uh, right, you can just stop right there. So let, let me go and start moving things around. I wanted to show you this first, didn't I? I did say that I was going to show you this first. So we need to bring this one in here. Unfortunately, the Big Daddy is always placed in the wrong... It, it's just place, placed facing the wrong way when you bring it in. So you've just got to be a little bit careful that you don't knock that stump grinder around very much. It is difficult to see. So let me just put that one on there and put the PTO on like that. And then we can bring that one back out. And now I knock that one round. I don't actually remember which way round it's supposed to be. It's difficult to get this stump grind wrong. I might have to get rid of it and then get it again. I think you go in this way. I think you go like that. The problem is, because we've got the manual attaching mod... Oops. Detach PTO first. Yeah, this is, this is going to be tricky. Um, I need to... Which way round is... Oh, now it's it's fallen through the map. Um, well, this is awkward. Let's get rid of that one a minute. <laughs> and then we'll try it again. This may end up costing us a bit of money, which is a bit of a shame. But we don't really have any choice in the matter. Yes, get rid of it. Right. And then we can go back to the shop. And we can go into forestry. And then we can go to this one right here. And lease. It's only $360 to lease. Which does make it a bit easier. Right. And back now which way round does it go i genuinely can't remember i think that the flat bit oh no it's which way round i'm i think i'm facing backwards if i go at it from this direction i think i actually need to be facing the opposite way round to what i am right now but let's try it from here let's just move forward i you know i honestly don't remember if it's got to be here or not and I'm not getting any symbol. Detach PTO. This is... yeah. Oh, there we go. We got it. Excellent. Right. So, you, it, because of the manual attaching mod, it does make it a bit more difficult. But you, So, that's how it sort of fits. You've got one on there. And then there'll be one in front. There's one on the side. And you can actually see one on the top as well. And one... Oh, there's one on the back there. Right. But, yes. We now have got the, 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 the Brux thingy on. You can see there's two of them. On the little bit on the, on the very bottom of the screen, on the um, the bottom right hand side, you can see there's now two machines. So the front one is the stump grinder, the back one is the actual chipper. So we can un we can unfold the chipper like that, and if you lower the chipper, it lowers both of them together. So you can you run both of them together, but you do have to switch them on separately. Um, unfold. I tell you what, I'll show you all of this up at the uh, trees. I got the sprayer in position up here. I just don't know if he's going to actually spray all of the field properly with all of these bits of trees lying around. So we'll find out in a minute. But we want to go very quickly through and see... Oh, there we go. 
our chipper. Right, so we get this one started up and we unfold it. We've got the spout out on the top, just like that. Now, if I do that, the unfortunate thing with this machine is that it, you can't, you don't have manual control over the actual spout. So the only way that you can get it to move and adjust is if you put it near a trailer. And then you've got to keep it away from a trailer. There is no controls for moving it manually. Look up here. That's the only disappointment that I got with this machine. Generally speaking, it's excellent. It's really, really cool. So this one here, you turn on the wood chipper. And then you've got to turn on the stump grinder as well. So you've got to, you've got to change machines like you would normally. And then you can turn that one on as well. So it's sort of like having front and rear mounted stuff. You, you all know how this works. And then you go back to the actual... I go always, always run it on the wood chip a bit. Now, different people do this in different ways. But I just, I've generally found that this works pretty well just doing it like this. You can bring that one along like that. And then you bring the stump grinder up towards the tree and it will cut it. It cuts it at an angle and it's now got 58%. You have, you don't actually see it in the, oh, it's actually removed the stump already. It removed that stump very quickly and easily, but you can see that it's now 58% wood chips on, in the top left hand corner with the glance mod that one is. And it doesn't actually show you the capacity down on the bottom right, which is the one thing that I don't particularly like about this mod. So we can bring that one in there. You do, you do have to sort of move just adjust backwards and forwards a little bit sometimes in order to get it to actually reach the right point but i don't know if you noticed there there was a slightly different sound as it went from stump grinding to sawing and so what some people do is they actually have just the saw running to start with so i'm going to bring this one over here and i'm going to go and cut another small tree and if you just listen you'll see that this one it should just cut the small tree Oh no, it's a stump grinder that I got at the moment. So I got the wood chipper at the moment. If I turn that one off, and I put the wood chipper on, which is just the, the front one, it should go in and cut the tree down, like that. So then I can turn that one off, and then I can move to the stump grinder, which is the other bit. And that will then go through, and that will remove the stump. It's quite difficult to see the stump in there, but it has now taken it, it's gone. And we are on 67%, so I'll do the same with this time. I'm just going to have them both running because I just find it easier. So I'll put the stump grinder and the wood chipper. So the wood chipper is the bit that does the cutting. The stump grinder does it separately. And i got both of them running at the same time there. You can hear them both running. And if I just move forward, there's still another little bit to cut. And sometimes it will give you the action like this, but it won't actually do anything. You've got to nudge it around a little bit. Sometimes you got to, you do have to move around a little bit in order to get it to work. But eventually it will work. So we bring this one back up like this. And it, it holds like 50 odd, if, I think it's like 50,000 litres of um, wood chips. So I bring it back here and then I press the unload anywhere. And it now unloads anywhere. And it will launch them out the back and start dumping them on your heap but you do have to be aware of where it's actually tipping these wood chips and as you move around the height of where the actual spout is going does also affect it as well so we can unload it there i'm just doing it like this because it's actually easier than using the trailer uh i appear to be stuck that's mainly because i'm uh it's lifted this down on the ground if i lift that one up I should be able to move let me move completely stuck Completely. Oh, there we go. Ah, I see. It was a little a, a dip. It was a little dip. Helper H has completed the task already. That was quick. All right, let me just run over and move this one on. Uh, complete. I complete. Now, which way am I going? Um. I have to jump to be able to see. Oh, there. I'm gonna go that way. I can't see anything at all. You you literally gotta jump up and down to be able to see where you're going. That is actually really really cool. I love that. Um. <laughs> We'll, we'll just bring this one over here and try not to knock all the logs around too much. Get it started on this field. So we've only got these two fields left to do. And then we've just got to wait for some crops to grow. So it'll probably be in the morning that we can finish off doing all of the spraying. We should have enough to finish this field. Oh, oh I see. I get out the front, do I? Let's jump over that. Okay, that we can carry on there. We've got four trees that we want left that we've got here to cut. And this wood chipper, the way that it works is 
uh, but by filling itself up, we can only take one tree at a time, because otherwise we're going to be... I mean, I suppose it doesn't actually matter. We've, we've got so many wood chips here, it doesn't really make much difference. So, I'll lower that one down, and into the tree. There we go. Now, it doesn't sound like the saw is operating on that one. Sometimes you do actually need to lift it up in the air in order to get the saw to operate, because the, st because the tree is set so high out of the ground. See, I'm bringing that one through. You can't see it very well because of all the underbrush. I'm going to lift it up there. Now I just heard the saw operating. Then sometimes you've got to bring, you've got to move the thing in and out to to get it to register. Sometimes it just doesn't work at all. Um, it can be a little sensitive. Get it into the right place. Eventually, though, it does usually work. There we go. Got that one to work. And then if I lower this one down, it's still on the unload anywhere. If I lower it down like that. It's taking out a bit more, and then I've got the rest of the stump down there. Is it going to take that stump? Quite possibly not. You do, you can sometimes mess around for quite a while. Oh, there we go. It did actually work. Ideal. That's brilliant. Right. Uh, that one is... I'm going to take the unload anywhere off so that we can go and get this next tree. So we can take that one down there. And back up a little bit. Going to work. I mean, there we go. No, nope. it's sort of working. It's sort of working. It's a bit painful sometimes. Let's, let's try lifting it up. I have found that I can sort of do this sometimes, and that actually works as well by raising and lowering continuously. There, I think that's got the saw. Did something. And now I can lower it all the way back down again. It's probably going to take another chunk off of there. Take the rest of that. Is it going to take it out? It does cut it at quite a steep angle whenever it's doing the cutting. Right. It doesn't like the idea of the rest of this one. I've done this before, and it has worked. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. It can be temperamental. Just keep in mind, though, that this one is actually the, the better version. The, the last one was far more sensitive than this one, and there was a lot of complaints. So it's... It, it's always was the difficulty with this one is it's never going to be exactly perfect to get all of the trees and get them unlo um, get them to cut properly because of the way because of the huge variation in the trees and everything it is going to end up giving you some difficulties let's just unload those wood chips there I can put them down next to the edge of the heap and through and we've got two trees left I'll try and get both of these together and then our next task is to go and get the... I was actually thinking that the next task we would start picking up the wood chips. We're not going to do that yet. We're going to gather up all of the tree. We're going to gather up all of the logs. And we're just going to stick them in a big heap near here so that we can keep working with them. And then once we've done that, we're then going to go and get the... Um, we'll, I think we'll remove the... We've got the... We, we, we've got a lot of different things that we need to do. We need to remove all of the stumps. We need to turn this into a new field. We also need to... Um, pick up all of the wood chips and take those and we also need to move all the logs into a heap and then we've got to turn them into wood chips and we've got to take those. I'm going to be using this Brux chipper to turn all of the trees into wood chips. I think it's just going to be the easiest way to do it. Bring that in. This wood chipper is now actually full. If you want to clear a map and you're not actually in the least bit concerned about saving the wood chips, you just want to get rid of loads of trees on a map to um, work on a project or something, use this one it's absolutely brilliant because once it reaches full capacity that's it it's it's going to stay at full capacity and it will keep cutting the trees down and it will keep chipping them up so you essentially you just the chips are just being lost they're um, just vanishing into nothing and it's a really cool and quick efficient way to get rid of the trees and you can and it's also reasonably realistic because you can just say that you are moving the trees you're um, you're shredding the trees you're just spreading out the wood chips on the fields now, unfortunately, the game doesn't actually class wood chips as fertilizer of any kind. Right, that one stump there doesn't seem to be wanting to grind. It's being a bit stubborn, so we're just going to ignore that one. And I'm going to come back around here again, and I'm going to unload that. But that is really all I've got time for today. So we're going to have to come back tomorrow. And the first thing that we're going to do up here is we're going to start gathering up all of these logs and turn them into a huge great big pile. And then when we've done that, then we can start gathering up all of the wood chips uh, sticking them in a trailer and taking them off to the sawmill to sell them. So we'll be able to start generating a bit of income, which is something that we desperately, desperately need on this farm. We do need some money. We are running very low on money. Money would be very, very nice. We want to get some. 
I want a nice big pile of moolah and then we can go and buy a load of sheds because that is the next thing that we've got to do. We do need to get those bale sheds so that we can get the bales in them and stored. They're all undercover. That sprayer is doing both of those fields together. That is excellent. I'm really pleased with that. That is called using your initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, we have someone over there using their initiative. That person will be getting a pay rise. Don't you worry about that. I haven't had to mollycoddle them or guide them through it in any way. My question for this week is, let's just go back through here and take a look. Pigs, right up here. we got some pigs. we got 250 pigs to be exact. Now, we haven't actually got them at the moment. What we're saying is that somebody else is looking after them. Uh, we will eventually get the pigs. So we'll activate them by giving them food and water and so on. And then we're going to have to maintain the pigs after that. Do you want me to start doing that fairly soon? Um, like in the next uh, week or so or would you rather that I left it for several weeks longer because we haven't actually done anything to the cows yet and we did say that we would do stuff to the cows first so we can either start them in the next week or so or we can leave them for a lot longer and then come back to them after we've done a few different jobs to making sure that the cows are maintained and fed and watered and so on and so forth so it's your vote it's your game Head into the comment section down below, let us know which one you want and why, and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. I'm just going to fold that one up there. Uh, nope, fold that one. Nope, fold that one. I will eventually get the right one. So we'll fold that one up there, and we want to get the truck, and we're going to head down to the shop, and we're going to get the autoload trailer ready for tomorrow's episode. If you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give me a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.